Public submissions on the Restoring Citizenship Removed by Citizenship Act bill has now closed, with public hearings starting on Monday. In 1982, a Samoan woman living in New Zealand named Falima Elisa challenged her deportation by taking her case to the Privy Council in the UK. Lisa won her case and the Privy Council ruled that all Western Samoans born between 1924 and 1948 were British subjects and were therefore New Zealand citizens. In response, the government at the time overturned this ruling. Today, Green Party MP Tiano Toyono's bill aims to restore the right of citizenship. Former National Party MP Anai Arthur Anai, who is lobbying for the bill, spoke to Caleb Fotheringham. I was in Samoa about three weeks ago with my team for four days and it was unanimous. Everywhere we went, people were right behind us. Absolutely. Same thing happened in uh, 2003 when I was there and I had two big rallies there. Huge. So, I mean... They're anticipating that hopefully New Zealand understand the world has grown out of the um, racism things that used to happen. I was writing the other day. I can remember distinctly when I arrived as a child, as 51, as a five-year-old, up to the 80s, racism was rife in the UK, in the USA, in South Africa. And over that period of time till now, it's changed. Who would have ever imagined today the key positions in the UK, your Prime Minister, Mayor of London, all senior positions across the Great Britain held by the children of migrants. The time has changed. We've got to wake up to it. And it's happening with us here. But to do this with this bill, it has to change now. What about the Samoa government? Have you heard from them? Are they happy to support it? Because I understand that there is a little bit of concern uh, around depopulation. I went to a meeting in Christchurch and a lot of people there, they wanted this to, uh, the the citizenship to extend to descendants as well. And I imagine there might be some concern around depopulation if that happens. No, they, that's what I get angry about because there's total misunderstanding of what has been said. And I'm going to tell you now so you understand. So the Privy Council decision said those born between 24 and 49, the 1st of January 49, were in actual fact British subjects because that was under a British rule at the time and administered by New Zealand. So on the 1st of January 49, British subjects became automatically New Zealand citizens. And the Privy Council said that plus their heirs, and their heirs can only be up to the 1st of January 1962 when Samoa became an independent country. And so if you take those numbers today, our, our, our numbers work out that there's about 15,000 people who are actually directly affected. And those, that were, those are those that were born be t- before the 1st of January 62. And the youngest of them today is 62 years old. Everybody born after 1962 is a Samoan and not affected by this Privy Council decision. So there is no mass migration of that group which is the group that actually runs Samoa today. So the Samoa government isn't concerned about mass migration when it comes to this bill? They are concerned because they haven't concerned. Their, their problem, I'll tell you directly, is they are being totally politically diplomatic about their actions. They do not want to upset New Zealand in any way by seeing to be siding with this, and they're sitting on the fence. And the previous Prime Minister did the same thing to me in 2003, saying this is a New Zealand um, domestic situation and didn't give me the support. Funnily enough, today he has got his own submission supporting this. It sounds like New Zealand First, I read an article from Pacific Media Network, it sounds like they are going to support the bill the whole way, and to my account that means that it should pass the whole way through. You know, National, they were the only party that did not support the bill in the first reading. Are you quite disappointed by that? I was bitterly disappointed, but not surprised. I mean, that that's a stand they've always taken. But, you know, they walked out with their tail between their legs and their heads down because all parties, including the ACT Party and New Zealand First, supported us to first reading. And, of course, the embarrassing thing for them as a party is that the select committee process was set up in New Zealand for all 
New Zealanders to be able to access through those select committees what's going on in Parliament. So why did they want to block the Samoan community from doing that? It's outright racism and they know it. It's just making look, them look like dickheads, to be very really true. And they must now be thinking very seriously. They have put themselves in a serious situation here and they really have to get this right. And, and, and my personal gut feeling, look, I felt sorry for the deliverers that night. I read their body language. They didn't want to do what they were doing, but they had a job to do. But I think internally themselves, they know this is wrong. So I'm, I'm hoping and praying that they will see the light and say, look, enough is enough. We've got to sort this thing out now. That's my prayer. <laughs> yeah. What well, do, do you think that could happen? Like if, are you, if, if you had to predict the future, would you be predicting national to, to support it? Because it seems like it will likely go through regardless with national support or not. I'm not a gambling person, but if I was, I put a million dollars and I could win. Because I think at the end of the day, the numbers are telling us if Winston and uh, David Seymour stick by us, we're there. We're there. The numbers are there, right? That means it goes past the second and third reading and then goes into the House for an open debate. Now, at that point of time, if National wants to continue to slag it, they're just making themselves look absolute, absolute stupid, not only in New Zealand, but internationally under, under human rights issues. It is totally outside the ball, I tell you. You're speaking pretty critically of National, which is, I suppose, to some, in some ways not surprising at all because you're obviously supporting this bill very strongly, but in some ways it is because it is your former party. How do you feel that you were sort of a part of National when they didn't support it? Yeah, if they didn't support me when I was there with this, I, I took... Dr. Barton to the National Party caucus so they could understand what this, and they just ignored it. You know, so, look, I have no personal sympathies or political about parties. All I'm interested in right now is that the wrong be got right for the Samoan people now. I have no sympathies for anybody who's going to go against me. I'm sorry.